All right, howdy, let's do some exercises for Hebrew uh, chapter 5, or Bartelt, sorry, chapter 5. Variations of the perfect. Let's take a look at that real quick. So, you're going to see a lot of this from now until, well, until you quit doing Hebrew. Don't quit doing Hebrew. So, until the day you die. Parse. This is fundamental to reading Hebrew, is to look at a verb and parse it. What does parsing mean? Well, it means analyze. And the reason we have to analyze a Hebrew verb in a kind of a different mode than, say, in any typical Indo-European language, Greek, Latin, German, uh, French, English, is because it's got all these parts in it that you have to take apart. <laughs> analyze. Take, you know, that's the Greek word meaning to take apart, right? It's a little different than recognition. Um, and that will become more apparent as we take them apart. So let's start. Let me show you how you should do this. So parse shalachnu. Here's the discipline you should adopt right now. Let me get the paint program up so that you can see it. And I'll show you precisely what I mean when it was with shalachnu, right? So everything's good there. So we're going to parse shalachnu, and it's always going to be kind of off to the left whenever you see this kind of in a quiz format. And you're, the, the discipline is sort of like um, uh, Mr. Miyagi in Karate Kid when he teaches uh, Daniel to wax on and wax off. And what he's doing is he's building muscles and muscle memory for a real fight. Just fantasy in a in, in the karate uh, community, but um, is actually quite quite helpful for, as a metaphor for what you're going to do here, parsing. So what you always do is you start with the conjugation you're in. Now, what does that mean? Well, you only have one so far, and that's the call conjugation. But the conjugation tells you an awful lot about the verb before you even get started. Plus, also, it means that you've analyzed the verb without guessing forward. Because if you guess forward, you're going to go wrong an awful lot. Uh, conjugation aspect, and you only have one of those. You're going to have about five when you're when we're done, maybe more. Uh, aspect person number gender. It's PNG. And the most important part is the root, and that's what you're trying to get to. That's the analysis goal, and then a translation, which is like, eh, whatever. Because uh, you can't really translate in a vacuum. Once you've got the root and kind of a basic, um, what does it say? You're fine. So we'll do this one. Shalachnu. And so what I'm doing is I'm analyzing. And I see a handful of things. I see, by recognition, this and this, which tells me I have a light consonantal ending. The new ending, because I've got katal in my head, like like a neon sign going through all those... Do -do 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 Katal new. That's the first common plural. Now you could go ahead and write PNG first common plural, but you've really got to take a second and remember a couple of things too. Um, in order to write PNG with confidence, you've got to take a look at the aspect. Is that the perfect or is that some other aspect? Well, since you only have one, it's the perfect, right? So it's the perfect. You could probably write perfect now too, but you got to make double dog sure and double triple check. Is that the call or is that some other conjugation? Well, you only have one, so it's the call. So you start like this, and you always do this. It's a discipline that will save your hide uh, when it comes to quizzes. Call. Perfect. And you probably want to write PF for perfect. Um, it, yeah, that's good enough for now for the sake of space. The, we already did the person, number, gender. It's first person. It's common. Uh, it's not right. It's it's plural. It's common. There. <laughs> First person, plural, common. The P is not person. The P is plural. The root is what you've got left over. Shalach. And shalach, the basic meaning is to send. And I, I really don't worry too much in my own instruction. I don't worry too much about making sure you have a nuanced translation for a, wor a word that's in a vacuum because I really do stress context. And so if you just have the basic meaning sent 
and then uh, we. So you got to basically tell me that you understand that the one PC is we and the root says sent in the uh, basic meaning. Um, and if you get it marked wrong and you've got a secondary meaning and you say, hey, shellac also means uh, tiddly. Oh, I forgot about that because I'm so used to seeing shellac as sent in the basic Hebrew grammar here. And you'll be fine, right? Just basically you have the right to appeal. I'm speaking to my students. The rest of you, you don't have the right to appeal. So let's get on with a couple more of these. Let's do some of the harder ones. Um, so that would be like 18, 19, or 20. Ah, yes, Malay. Going back to the book. Take a look there. Malay isn't hard. It's a state of verb, and he and he puts it at 18. It's a pedagogical, I wouldn't say a trick. It's, um, it's a challenge, right? Because you've been working really hard at this point, first of all, reviewing the chapter, and then you've gone through, you know, 15 of these exercises, and your brain's tiring. And you get to Malay, and you panic. Oh yeah, this is a stative verb. It's not pointed the same way, but it's not hard either. It's a stative verb, and it's called perfect third singular masculine because there's no other thing it can be. And it's from the root mala, and he is uh, basically, do you know how to translate a stative verb? Or basically, you know, it's basic saying. Yes, you can say, it means to say, um, he is full of it. Is it ever intransitive? It's a question we have. Hmm. Malau, number 19. So you got the chart out, and it's not too hard, but then you take a look at it. But let's do this on the paint program. So let me try to serve you and serve you well here. And might end up getting lost behind my head, but I'll double check that. So we got Malau. Malau. Mm -hmm. Also, writing it out separately helps. And you got everything you need there. You've got uh, this standalone ooh thingy. I'm analyzing, and it's preceded by a vocal schwa. And see, you can you can hear the paradigm firing again, like the neon light. You've got you've got these two possibilities. It could not even two. You've got this one possibility, katalu, right? Uh, it is a vocalic ending preceded by a vocal schwa. There it is. So you've got everything that it should be. So you're, this is trial trial and error, but it ought to be less than trial and error. I'm jiggling these. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got I've got my ratchet set, and I have no idea which which socket goes over this nut or over this bolt. Uh, and I'm trying a handful of them. It's like, you know what? I've been doing this a while. I bet you it's either the 10 millimeter or the 9 millimeter. So you really ought, ought not be flailing, right? And you also got this lovely little thing there. That's the meth egg to tell you you've got an open eye. It looks just like Katalu. So you can kind of do a little shortcutting here, but get in the habit of saying call, perfect. Three, uh, third person, number, it is plural, and it is common, and it's from the root mala which is pointed male, it's a stative verb, but you don't have to worry about pointing it there. And that says they are full of it. Trying to have a little fun. So there you go, that's how that works. See, that's analyzing or parsing a verb. Let's take a look at the uh, other, other last, last one there. Oh, Nathati, Nathata. I did enough on that one when I introduced it. That's just from Nathan. And that's the assimilating none. Call perfect 2SM or two, yeah, person number. Yeah, 2SM from the root Nathan, Woody Nathan, um, to give with the second singular masculine is you gave. Right? No problem. Don't make it hard. Now let's separate the wheat from the chaff here. Write it in Hebrew. Let's do these. You. Plural, masculine, served in the temple. Okay, let's give it a shot. Um, I'm going to make a new... Don't save. Switch screens. You 
served in the temple. So let's write that out so I don't have to go, what did it say? You served, that's plural masculine, in the temple. Remember Hebrew is a VSO language, VSO. So start with the verb, which means you've got to remember what a verb is. The verb is the action thingy. <laughs> Served. To serve is avad. So let's get that up on the board. And we're going to start over here with the verb. Avad. All right. You plural masculine. Katal. Katala. Katalta. Katalt. Katalti. Katalu, katultem. There's my plural masculine. Oh, by the way, you is second person, right? So that's, and I'm going to write, even show you even how you should do this if you're if you're really struggling still. Write it down. Katultem. Copy this right off the old, uh, uh, oops, <laughs> propertonic reduction, right? Katultem. All right, first of all, you don't have to do much work here. In fact, you can do a little cheating. Again, like, work on these shortcut cheater things. Oh, look at that. And I can probably just put throw that there, too. Just import. Uh-oh, that didn't work. Okay. Uh, so we got to put a schwa here, right? Uh-oh, that didn't work again. Uh, try again. There we go. Okay, that's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because ayin is in that list that I learned on day one. Reish, Aleph, Ayan, Hey, and Chet. Reish, Aleph, Ayan, Hey, and Chet. This is a guttural. Gutturals prefer A vowels. Instead of just a little schwa, they, they want to have this. In fact, let me make sure I make it a different color. <laughs> Avad Tem. Okay, you served in the temple. I'm doing the wrong lesson first. I was supposed to be doing my Bible study first. Oh well, they'll wait. Um, in the temple. That's just hey call, right? So let's put the vocabulary word up. Hey, you got to remember to keep practicing. Hey call, that's your, that's your um, vocabulary word. You looked it up. I need to say in the temple. The is... A cloak and dagger. Hey, hey, ha plus doubling. Hey and chet has virtual doubling, so it looks like that. And then we prefix the baith to it. Baith. B. Hey, call. Oh, that won't work because cloak and dagger. Hey. The hey. Oops. The hey is trying to kill you, so he hides behind the baith. Whoop. Disappears. The schwa passes out over somewhere in the corner, being drugged. And the bath slides over. Ba hey call. There you go. And it's going to have a dot in it. If you've got somebody who marks you down because you forgot to put the doggish lene in there, you've got yourself a grad student grading your exam. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're not 100% right, but I'm pretty sure you got it. When you're writing, you served in the temple and you forgot the doggish lene and the guy takes a point off. That's a cruel master there. What I would do is put it in for you and say, don't forget your dog is Lene. It's because I'm trying to make friends uh, before the judgment comes. Right? Let's take a look at the next one. The next one says, I'll read it to you, she chose a house. And I never remember this one. This is one of those things I always have to ask. So she chose VSO, right? She chose a house. Chose. Is the verb bachar. She chose is katal, katala. Gosh, it's a major variation chapter. I wonder which variation this is. <laughs> katala, right? And so you write in those those vowels. Let's not use red. That's for cloak and dagger hay. And this isn't cloak and dagger hay. This is another hay. Um, that's a hay. And then you got a schwa here. It won't work. Because it's a guttural, two guttural, second guttural. Bahara, she chose, and a house is vocab, right? Bayeth. And I don't know if you want to use the buh for the 
direct object marker. I cannot remember if you use bubieth with the indirect, or sorry, indefinite direct object. Uh, I'll have to ask again. and it, it probably doesn't matter. Okay, so that one's that one. Let's leave VSO up there just for the sake of this. Let's get some more of these on the board here. The third one is going to be I gave water. Okay, that's going to be uh, uh, what major variation is this one. Well, the verb is nathan. Okay, that's the one that has the uh, assimilating nun, right? So I'm going to write the medial form. I gave uh, Cataldi, right? Cataldi. Oh, no, no. There we go. Cataldi. So I'm going to try to import as many of these as I can. Nathan T. Assimilating nun, this guy. There he's got to assimilate and go into this letter as a doggish forte. And so let's write it, rewrite it exactly the same way, except, oops, except without that, that, that third letter. And that doggish is now a doggish forte. And that's I gave. And what is he doing? the water so we have a vocabulary word you look up the vocabulary word it's mayam not to be confused with shamayam which is heaven and it's the water so cloak and dagger hey ha plus doubling hamayam no tricks nathati hamayam see keep working it Again, I go a little fast on the video, thinking that you can you, you have the wherewithal to push pause and rewind if you need to. Slide back. Tape right. Okay, so the next one is We saw the heavens. We saw. And I'm gonna stop with the whole sentences. I'm just gonna do the verbs for the sake of time. We saw. Ra. Ah, uh, okay, we've got a handful of things here. We've got a guttural here. We've got a guttural fur, a second olive here. And we've got a third A here. The real issue is going to be the third A, right? So we saw Katalnu is our paradigm. And that's the first common plural, we killed. And we're going to be getting rid of this third A. So let's try to get as many of these as we can. Ra... No, it isn't going to work because we've we've taken the time to learn the third hay. And the third hay is going to do this with the consonantal endings. You're going to get a replacement. The, the hay is going to disappear altogether and change clothing. Uh, going to dress as a, a beautifully clad woman. You're going to dance with her. Right? Ra-inu. And he's going to try to kill you stab you in the back or poison your drink or something while you're placing your bet at the roulette wheel. That's a nun. Ra'inu. Katalnu. And that's how the third hay works. Let's do the verb for the next one. The servants built the house. So they're going to build. It's another third hay. Oops. It's another third hay. It's bana. That's your basic uh, paradigm. Bana. Begad kapat. And it's going to be they. Is that right? This is one of those things where you cannot pass my 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 uh, quiz unless you get it right. I'm sure it's they, right? The servants. So it's it's call perfect third plural common. They built. So it's ka, ka to lu, but don't even bother with ka to lu here because it's not going to help you. You've got ban nu. In fact, it's not ban nu. It's banu. Banu. The accent is here. And to be specific, it's here. Banu. Banu. Because if it were banu, it would be the root bean because that's a hollow root i'm going to bet you that our next verb is going to be a hollow root let's see <gasps> the 
the servants returned to the temple in peace. Turn, return, repent is the verb, the servants. So it's call, perfect, third common, plural again, third plural common. And it's from the root, shuv. So that's the hollow root. You will not see this in the perfect, so let's get rid of it altogether because it's hollowed out by the perfect. Okay. Um, back to the back to that. Thank you. It's the servants they. And I made you memorize this paradigm, so you should just be able to write it in. Shavu. Third common plural is a vocalic ending. All vocalic endings are preceded by a vocal schwa, but with these these hollow root letters, they looked for a preceding syllable, but it wasn't there for them. And so they said, look, we tried really hard. Let's here's an accent to help you with the vocalic endings. You will not get that kind of help with the cloak and dagger hay, but that's not my fault. That's because it's, the, it's a, a nefarious enemy uh, doing everything it can to trick you. Okay, good. Let's look at some of the sentences while we're here. Go back to the document screen. I'll just read some of these out. Let's go to the hard ones toward the end here. Let's look at number 10. Baninu bayeth ba'ir. This is a sentence that will show up on all my exams in various forms, longer and longer and longer and longer. And the idea is to slow you down and make you parse right? It's cruel, and I enjoy it. I enjoy watching you suffer, honest, but it really is for your own good. I can do that. I am the professor. Baninu bayeth ba'ir. So you have to parse. Baninu. Let's go parse it in the paint screen here. That's not the paint screen for you. It is for me. Let's go parse baninu. And the idea is for you to analyze. See, what I'm trying, trying to convince you of is that, well, first of all, VSO, right? So look in the verb position and see if there's a verb there. Baninu. You've got the verb right there. You've got to do, so, oops. You've got to do some work here. This doesn't look like Katal at all. There's nowhere in Katal, but you do have a little help. You get through Katal, you got Katal nu, Baninu. Huh, is it first common plural? Per, first plural common? <laughs> hmm, could be. You're going to have this new ending. That pretty much hits you, but the, all you're left with is bani. And so you're missing you're missing an, a, a, a consonant. You could try to look up bani in your in your lexicon, but you'll never find it because it's just not what it is. You've got the third hay. This is the cloak and dagger hay. And so you'll find that you have bana here. We built, and you know, write it out provisionally. Is this behind my head? Let's see what you're looking at. Not quite. On my head. We built my head. Uh, bana, we built. And then you've got the next thing to, to parse, which is bayeth. And bayeth is a vocabulary word. House. And just leave it as house. We built... I'm trying to teach you how to do this, by the way. That's why I'm doing it kind of messily. This is what your paper should look like with variations for your own learning style. Ba'ir. Ooh, that looks kind of goofy. Ba'ith is a vocabulary word. Ba'ir is not something I recognize. So I put it up on the board here. Ba'ir. I parse that out. Um, parsing goes for everything in Hebrew, by the way. You parse a verb, but you can parse on anything else you want to. By ear. I have a couple of clues here. I have, I'm starting to learn to recognize by now that a baith at the front end of the word could be just the baith prefix. And this comates, it could be the cloak and dagger hay's feet. And I'm looking here, ah, reish, olive, ion, compensative lengthening. This could be. Now, what about ear? That's a vocabulary word I recognize. City. So let's try it provisionally to see if it works. In the city. We built house in the city. Especially if you add the indefinite article, which we need in English. We built a house in the city. 
There you go. It's about recognition, making educated guesses. Um, if it doesn't work in the end, you have to go back and figure out where you went wrong. Uh, I don't remember how you do that wrong. What you shouldn't do is stare at Baninu, Baeth, Baer, and panic or get frustrated and quit. Don't look at that. Look at one word at a time and parse it. Look at if you want to do this, you're going to have to put the time in, right? It's like woodworking. Paul Sellers, one of my favorite video woodworkers, will say every on occasion woodworking, and he'll, he, it's called scrub planing. And what's scrub planing? Well, you take this eight foot board that's got a couple of cups in it and some warping, and you get a scrub plane, which is just this hollowed out uh, blade, and you start working that board and it's hard it's laborious and it can only be done in such a way if you put it through a planer it won't work uh you know one of the motorized ones except for the real fancy schmancy twenty thousand dollar ones and that it works but it's got special things to make it work and he'll say it's called woodworking <laughs> you know not wood vacationing and i'll i know a lot of guys take up woodworking because for them, it's uh, about the tools, and they're not really working. Uh, when you are, you know, dripping from your nose, it's pet persper perspiration, perspiring from your nose, trying to flatten out a board, that's woodworking. It makes you love the board, though, especially when it comes to pass that the grain shows up and it's perfectly square, 90 degrees, and every angle you can, and you put it together with the other one you made and glue it up and it becomes a perfectly flat panel with glorious grain and stuff like that. It's the same thing for Hebrew. Put the work into it and you will fall in love with it. And it is a glorious thing when you begin to read Psalm 23 and it pops out at you. Wow. It's not magic. It's not like the versions are no good. It's just like you see it for what it is in a way that you can't in a version. And then you can begin to comment on it, and that's where the fun really starts. Fear and trembling, you comment on the Bible. Male, mm. habayeth, koloth. Same thing. Male is in the verb position. It doesn't look right. Again, it's late in the season here, so you're tired. And you have to remember, oh yeah, that's a stative verb. He was full of it. <laughs> but you look in the subject position, because it's third person, and you see, is the Habayath, is that a possible for a verb? I'm going to go switch over to you for you. Is that, is Habayath possible for the verb? Meaning, can it stand as the subject of the verb? Is it third singular and masculine Habayath? Yeah, it is. The house was full of it. Koloth. Voices. If you've got four kids, it is. The house was full of voices. And then the last one, kavadu, another, another lovely stative verb. It's a uh, call, perfect, third, plural, common. Uh, it's third person, so let's check the subject position for a, a subject that's a possible uh, subject of the verb. Is that a masculine plural or a feminine plural? Im, and it's a noun, yep, the words were weighty. The words were heavy. The words were important. Jiggle it till it makes sense. Good enough. There's some exercises for you. Fall in love. Head over heels. You're in Paris on one of them gondola boats. I don't think they have the gondola boats. Anyways, you're on the Riviera looking towards Notre Dame. 